Hi guys, welcome back. I'm uh, gonna get back on this cougar. So funny story. Get into it here in a second, but uh, I'm gonna get going on this roof. I wasn't planning on doing this roof anytime soon, but I uh, called to get insurance on this thing, and I was gonna get classic car insurance on it. And I sent them some pictures of it, and they're like looking at the pictures, like, "Is that roof rusty?" And I was like, "Well, it's got light surface rust on it because it had a." A vinyl top on it and we took the vinyl top it basically rotted off of it so we removed it and uh they're like well you know because it's kind of got rust on and we kind of consider that a project vehicle and it's not really complete so and i think i did it for i set it up for like eight thousand dollar value to insure it for that much you know you can kind of pick your number whatever you want basically to insure these things so so uh they're like, we can go ahead and insure it, but it'll be a $10,000 deductible. <laughs> I said, what? A $10,000 deductible? You know, I'm insuring it for eight grand. They're like, well, unless you finish the car and, you know, make it really nice, yada, yada. So anyway, so I kind of ran into that headache um, trying to get classic car insurance on this thing. So, so I guess, you know what? I just decided, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and get going on this thing. So uh, let me bring in and show you what I'm working with here. All right, so... The roof isn't really bad on this thing. There is, it's probably kind of hard to tell. There's, well, there's one little hole there that went through. And then there is one right here as well. And there was one over there, but overall, I mean, it's pretty solid. It's pretty scaly and rough. A couple deep spots up here, but not too bad. Um, should be pretty easy to work with. Taking mine here, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a body guy. I'm not a paint guy. So, I mean, I have very limited experience with this stuff. I've, I've dabbled in it a tiny bit over the years, but it, it's not my specialty. I basically have no patience for it. So, um, went down to a local auto body supply place here in town and got some recommendations from him as to what to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit this real hard with like a 60 grit sandpaper and knock all this scale off, try to basically get it down to those metal, get it down to metal um, as much as I can. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try my hand at doing um, some tinning. So what I got was basically you just use a torch and then you use some 60-40 uh, solder and then some paste to tin it and then to fill the holes in. So I'm gonna try this. I've never done it before. I watched a few videos on it. it didn't look too terribly difficult. So I figured what the heck, I'll, sh I'll give it a shot. This is all new. I just wanna learn how to do all this stuff. So it just, this is a perfect car to experiment with. So, and then I've got, I bought a whole bunch of different roll locks and stuff off of Amazon, some wire brushes and die grinders. I, don't, I can't find my Air DA, so I'm just gonna use my little cheap Ryobi thing here. And I got a bunch of paper for it. So I'm going to use that um, to hit it, knock it all down. And then I'm going to tape all the chrome off and everything. And really, I got to really get down inside to these inside these edges and corners here really good. And then down the A-pillars, of course. The A-pillars are in good shape, so it shouldn't be too much there. It's mostly glue. So everything else underneath here looks really good. No major issues at all. All right, I got everything taped off here. Got all the trim taped off, and I just put a line here where the roof trim goes.
bit of progress. That, uh, I don't know, that little orbital doesn't seem to really want to knock this stuff down. It's pretty scaly. I got the, at least the rough part of it done. Um, I don't know. I might go up and get a DA. Here's one of the holes I got to fix. And of course it just spread into that one. So took the wire wheel and just tried to get that thing cleaned out. And same thing with this one here as well. So, um, I've got these two holes here and then there's one little one on the other side than the one on the front, but, uh, it's, it's pretty wavy too. This thing did have a little bit of hail damage to it. When you look at it just right, you can definitely, I don't know if you can see it, but there was definitely some hail damage. So when I do this, I'm going to have to skim coat this whole roof with mud just to smooth it all back out again. So I'm going to figure something else out here with this sander. This thing, I don't think is just cutting it. It's not cutting the mustard. All right, I went over it again with a heavy wire brush. Um, I've got a buffing wheel here and I had this heavy wire brush here. So I went over it with that thing and that knocked a lot more of the scale out of it. Uh, deep down in there, the stuff is just so deep. So it's a little bit better, but now I need to get it stripped down to, I really want to get it down to metal if I can. Made a little bit more progress here. So, man, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little frustrated with it. There's a reason I don't do body work. So, I'm throwing everything but the kitchen sink at this thing, trying to strip it down, and it just does not want to come down. So, uh, I bailed on the cheap orbital, and I went down to the old Hobo Freight, got one of these. This thing actually rips pretty good. This is a good little DA, I like it a lot. It feels good, um, it's got good power. So I used this, that knocked off a little more scale, and I didn't feel like I was getting far with that, so I resulted to this. So <laughs> This is a, a buffer, basically, with a big steel grinding disc on it, and I just hit it really light. I'm just trying to break that, that surface tension of the rust on here. It is just really bad, so I'm having a hard time chewing through that. Um, I even have a Makita with a flap disc on it, and I was trying that in spots really lightly. And I'm kind of, I'm starting to get it, get it broke through now. Um, I am going to hit this with epoxy primer. So I don't need to have it perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy this whole thing. I'm going to fill these holes first, and then I'm going to spray it with epoxy to seal it and lock it all in. And then I'm going to do my mud work over that, and then I'm going to hit it with a 2K high build over that and then I'll paint it. It's a little excessive, I think, but <clears throat> for this thing, but being the roof, I just want to make sure that this roof is locked in. So I'm just trying to make sure that I get as much of this stuff out of here as I possibly can. And for the most part, I do. It looks pretty good. I just, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it down to bare metal because it's, it is really thin in some spots and I just don't want to go that, go that deep with it. You know, right here, there's just a lot of pitting. If I take that down to bare metal, man, I'm going to be kind of in trouble. I guess I could maybe spot sandblast it, but I'm afraid of blowing through it and causing that. Again, I'm not a body man. You guys can laugh at me, criticize me. Please do. Um, I want to learn, but, you know, at the same time, it's, uh, I got to know when to cut my losses on this thing too. So, all right, I'm going to finish that other side and then I'll bring you back later. All right, well, I got a little bit more here. This stuff just will not come off. And you know, the paper that I have is probably not the best either, but I think it's gonna have to be probably good enough. So I do wanna try to solder these, but I don't wanna try to weld it because it is very thin around it. And I'm worried I'm gonna just blow right through it. One thing I didn't think of is the headliner. There's a material on the roof and then there's a gap between the headliner. So I am worried about uh, burning into the headliner, so, and I don't even want to try to pull this headliner out of this thing. So, I'm going to try a little piece right here and see how it goes. All right, I'm going to give this a shot. So, I've got some, uh, tinning flux here, and I'm just going to wipe it on here. Basically, you just coat it on there and don't be bashful. I 
And then I've got my, I've just got a stick here and I put some wax on it. Just, you can use any old wax. So I got that. So now I'm going to heat it as carefully as I can here. I'm going to let that melt down. Gonna slowly work that in. I'm gonna let it cool for a second. Move this around. <sighs> Need to let it cool for a second. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Good. That looks all right. All right, I'm just going to take a file here. I'm just going to kind of knock it down. All right, took down the high spot, so I'm just going to take a roll lock with a 36 on it and hit it. See where I'm at here. It's pretty good. Feels good. Let me hit it with the DA. All right, that looks pretty good. And my whole goal here was just to fill the holes, and the holes are gone. So at least then when I put the mud on it, it won't uh, fall inside. So, but looks pretty good, came out good. Old school technique, um, it's kind of cool. Again, I've never done that before, so it's kind of fun trying new stuff, so. All right, getting back on this Cougar today. Been a few days, been all week. Haven't had much time to mess with this thing, so I went back to the body shop and uh, consulted those guys up there. Good dudes up there, uh, really helpful, really friendly. So um, they kind of pointed me in the right direction and what to do with this rusty roof. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. So what he recommended was this stuff here to uh, remove the rust. So basically, I just it's kind of a gel. So I'm just going to pour this on there and I'm going to brush it in real heavy and then it says to let it sit till it dries and then wash it off with water so um, and it supposedly does leave a, a coating on it to protect it and then I can go ahead once I get that done then I can go ahead and shoot the uh, primer right over the top of it so I'm just going to pour this stuff on there I got a scotch brite pad and then I've got a wire brush and I'm going to do both 
I'm going to try to work it in. I'm going to try not to get it on the green paint. And if I do, I can just rinse it off real quick. It's not a big deal if I do. So, um, got everything pretty well covered. It should be fine. So, Might have to do a couple coats of this, but I guess we'll see. I can already definitely see it working, so that's good. And I think I'll take the wire brush and I'll try to really work it into those deep pits. So this is supposedly just gonna neutralize everything really nice. I'm just trying to give myself the best fighting chance I can to get this paint to stick, so. Definitely working, I can definitely see it. But I'll definitely have to do two, maybe three times I'll have to do this, I think. And I'm not expecting it to all go down to bare metal. I don't think it's going to. I think it's just too deep, but I'm gonna do my best with it. Let's see what happens. Did a couple of rounds of that stuff. It did help. Um, but of course, when I rinsed it off with water, it did a quick, really light flash rust on it. So it helped, but it's not 100%. I think this stuff is just so deep in the metal, I'm not going to be able to get it out. All right, so I was going to give up on this thing for the day and just let it sit overnight. And I got to thinking about it, and I was like, you know, I've always cleaned rust in the past with uh, some kind of acid, like pool acid, that type of thing. So... I had some pool acid laying around and I thought, you know what, I'm going to pour it on here really lightly and easy and get a brush and brush it in and see what that does. And man, that did make a difference. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it cut through a lot of this really heavy garbage. So it definitely made a huge difference. But again, it's probably hard to tell. Um, it did clean off quite a bit of the rust. And then I just went back over it again with the DA just to try to get some of that other loose stuff off. And I feel much better about putting epoxy primer over this now. So it looks much, much better. Uh, well, there's probably the ugliest tape job you've ever seen in your life, but <laughs> it's covered. All right, so this thing's ready to go. I, I worked on this thing for a little bit longer. And I've got it down pretty good, so it was just getting, it's just starting to get too thin, so I'm done. I'm ready to get some primer on this thing. All right, I think I got everything ready here. Got my fancy Harbor Freight paint gun. Uh, everybody gave these things pretty decent reviews, so I figured I'd give it a shot. So I got a regulator on it, and I got a filter water separator on it as well. I got everything cleaned up, cleaned the whole inside of it, brushed it out. So it's ready to go, um, getting any of the uh, oils on it from shipping out of it. So, And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this epoxy primer. And I've got my catalyst for it as well. So, And I ended up getting these cups. They are the PP something or other cups for these spray guns. And I got the adapter on it. Figured I'd give it a shot. These kind of made sense, you know, keeps it nice and clean. You can just go ahead and throw those away. So, um, so yeah, I think I'm ready to go. I got the can all nice and stirred up and this stuff mixes one to one. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix, this is a 20 ounce cup. I'm just going to go ahead and mix a full 20. I've got... All right. That looks pretty good. So now... Set this cap on here. Just gonna push it in, make sure it's seated. And then the locking ring. Hopefully these things are worth a damn. Everybody says they were just as good as the PPG stuff, so I guess we'll find out. All right. 
that is ready. Take this tape off, Let's put the lid back on the can before I go out there. Car's all wiped down, it's ready to go, and I've got a piece of wood set up out there just so I can just do a test pattern. Okay, keep in mind, I have no idea what I'm doing here, so this is all new to me. Oh, I don't want it to spray that way. Turn this thing. It's like it's got too much pressure. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. I'm gonna go with that. I forgot my mask. Sorry guys. Don't do what I'm doing. I have a brand new one and I forgot to get it out. All right, I'm going to give that about 10 minutes and then I'll do another one. Look how wavy that roof is. <laughs> but that's all right, so. That stuff lays down really nice, so. Cool. Looks like I had a little bit left over in there, so. I'm gonna go clean this thing up and let this stuff dry. I got the uh, roof all primered on this thing. Well sealed primered whatever you want to call it everybody's got a specific name for it but i've got the epoxy on it so um what i ended up doing was i just hit it with some uh i let it cure for a couple days and then i went ahead and hit it with some 80 grit just lightly went over it the whole roof real quick just to scuff it up so now what i'll do is i'll just do a really light coat of mud over the entire roof to try to get this thing smoothed out so so I got a few new tools that I bought and whatnot I'm going to try out. So uh, let me show you what we're working with. So I've got the mud. This is what the guy gave me down there at the shop. So that's what I'll be using. Uh, I got a new board. And then my sanders, of course. So I found this. This is one of those 8-inch National Detroits. I guess they call them the hog. I found this at our local uh, automotive park and swap and i paid 10 bucks for this thing so and it works perfect the pad's a little beat up on the bottom but you can still get parts for these things so it's not a big deal i'm not worried about it for now as little as i'm going to use it so i um, really happy with that purchase i already mixed all this stuff up but i'll you know, looks like i'll have to do it again Mixed it up a couple hours ago, but I really do like the smell of Bondo. So I really have no idea how much I'm going to need here, so I'm just going to guess. I'm sure I'll have to do this a couple times, so I'll try not to make a giant mess anyway. So it says for every bit that you put out that's about the size of a golf ball, you need an inch and a half worth of this stuff, so... I'm just going to guess here.
gonna go with that. Looks good. All right, I think I'm gonna start towards the middle and kind of work, start from the back and work my way forward, I think, so I can. Okay, well, I ruined that. <laughs> I put way too much hardener in it. It's already, it's already starting to set up, so. Okay, redo. You can see where I had to sand the roof down a little bit, so. Like I said, I am not a professional at this, so don't laugh at me too bad. Try to remember not to skip it. I'm not doing texture on a, I'm not doing drywall. <laughs> so I don't want to skip texture it. I'm just trying to keep it nice and flat and low as I can, so. So it would have been a lot easier if I would have just put a vinyl roof back over this thing. I like vinyl roofs, I don't mind them at all. But it is Arizona and they are hard on it. It is hard on it here. They don't last very long. All right, next round. All right, got her covered anyway. Not the prettiest thing in the world. Again, I am not a body man, but it came out all right. I got some highs and lows. This curve over here was a little more challenging. And then I did get just a super light coat on the A pillars, you know, and I was trying to keep, trying to keep it off of underneath here where the trim goes. And then you've got the little clip mounts in here too. You know, I'm trying to keep those things clean as well, but, uh, It'll be all right. It's a good first coat, at least, to get it covered. And then I'm going to take my big 8-inch, that thing, my big hog there, and I'll slowly start knocking this stuff down, start working it and getting it smoothed out. I'm sure my brother and my dad are laughing at me because they were both... I actually come from a line of body men. My dad was a, uh, my dad was a body man for his whole life and specialized in Corvettes, did a lot of Corvette restorations. And my brother was a body man his entire life. Of course, they're both passed away, but, but, uh, so yeah, they, I never, I never got the patience gene, I guess, to do this kind of thing. I just never had the patience for it to do it. But, you know, I don't mind doing it every once in a while, little projects like this. So it, it's not that big a deal, but I wouldn't want to do it for a living. That's for sure. So. First coat of mud down. 
Got it sanded all down. It's pretty decent. I took a uh, pencil and I circled all my low spots that I could really feel that were really obvious. So I can go back over it again. Um, they were just deeper than deeper than I thought. So a lot of it's pretty good. Um, this edge here is definitely a challenge. You can see all the pitting in it. And this edge is not very defined anymore because of all the rust and the pitting. So I tried to get it as good as I can through here, but I don't know. I might just put like a thin coat across here again and then kind of work it out and see if I can't blend it into the roof. So... All right, I got round two on this thing yesterday. It's the next day. Starting to get a lot better now. Um, sides and everything over here are really good. And then I've still got a little bit in the middle where it's I've got a few low spots that I circled there with the pencil, but it feels much better. I've got all this area really good down here is feeling pretty good too. So, But of course, until I get primer on it and I can really figure out the low spots, I won't truly no, but um, you can see where I circled the other spots from before and I just started sanding it down to where I started to see the pencil and then that really got it nice and smooth so it's turning out pretty good so I'm gonna get this middle area covered one more time and then get it sanded down one more and then hopefully I can get some primer on this thing all right I think that's the final product before 2k I build I got it down pretty good so I had to go over it a couple times, one right here and one over here, and just a little skim just to even it out. And then I got my bigger block here with 250 on it and uh, went over it with that. Tried to keep it as flat as I possibly could across the entire roof line. So it feels really good. Um, I think it's gonna be good enough. So, but so far so good. All right, I'm gonna get ready to shoot some primer. All right, well, I got it primed. So, turned out all right. I got a little tiger striping in it. Uh, I'm supposed to use a 8.1 tip with this primer. It's a 2K high build. All he had was black, so I just went with black. I'm gonna paint it black anyway, so it's fine. I just used what the gun had, which was a 4.1. So, I just opened up the fluid all the way and then the fan all the way. And I actually had to bump the pressure up just a little bit, but it's fine. It's built up pretty heavy, so I should have enough to sand anyway. I'll find out here after a little bit. All right, so I got this 2K sanded down here. Came out really nice, came out really smooth. Uh, this is spot putty here that you're seeing. I had a couple little tiny minor imperfections, just filling in those little divots. But uh, otherwise, Came out really nice, really smooth. Looks pretty good, pretty happy with it. That 2K sand's really nice, that high build. And I put a couple of good heavy coats on it. So I went down, back down to the paint shop and what I'm gonna use is the Satin Hot Rod Black. So I got a quart of that and then the uh, activator as well for it. Got some tack cloths and wax and grease remover. And I think that's it. The gun I have, the tip and everything for that is going to be perfect for that paint. So I think I am in good shape here. I'm going to try to get this thing shot today and get it over with. All right, there's the final before paint. I did wipe, I just wiped it down with wax and grease remover, so that's still drying. So that's what you're seeing there. But got everything wiped down. And that's where the spot putty was, those little minor imperfections there. Got that filled, and then there's a couple little ones over here. But aside from that, I did get in through the metal here in a couple spots, but I'm not going to worry about it. So there's a couple little fill-ins I did over there. But overall, I hit it with a Scotch-Brite for the final sand, and then... Got it really nice and smooth. As you can see, it's pretty smooth. So, all right, I'm gonna mix up um, paint. 
the wind has been kind of coming and going a little bit so and i'm out here in the backyard so i'm hoping and i got some tack cloth so as soon as right before i start spraying i'm going to wipe this down with a tack cloth and then hit it so hopefully i don't get too much dirt in it but i know it's probably going to happen it's inevitable so the guy at the paint store said to keep your pattern nice and tight you know he says otherwise this that flat stuff will or satin tends to tiger stripe so i'm definitely going to do that so yeah, all right, I'm gonna get ready here. All right, first coat is down. It said one good heavy wet coat. Turned out so far so good. I got my mask on, so you probably can't hear me very well. Not sure. Now this is satin, so it will dry out. So. So far, so good. Of course, looking at it in gloss, it looks pretty good. Should have maybe done it in gloss. But All right, I'm gonna let this flash and hit it again. All right, I got two heavy coats on it. It looks like it came out pretty good. It kind of flashed a little dry spot right there, but I'm hoping it's gonna blend in once it dries, we'll see. I don't see any tiger striping, so I think I've got it really well. It looks like it laid really flat and it looks pretty nice. See it there, it's still just starting to dry a little bit now, so. Luckily, the wind cooperated with me. So, I think... I think I'm in pretty good shape here. I, I'm i pretty happy. I, for my first ever paint job. And on top of that, it's a satin paint job. I've always heard these were hard to spray, so... You just have to exercise a little more care anyway, I guess. But, I don't know. I can't wait till it dries. I'm going to let it sit here for, well, I don't know, probably a good day or so and before I touch it. Hopefully it dries just enough. The wind's blowing just a little bit, so I'm hoping no dirt. I got a little bit of dirt in it, and there's a couple little tiny spots. But, oh well, for painting it outside out in the wind, it's pretty good. All right, I got this thing untaped and it looks pretty good. There's some dirt, that's just from my hand marks there, but just a little dusty. But there it is. Pretty darn happy with that. I'm actually really surprised with myself at how flat I got the roof <laughs> because this satin sure does show every single flaw so i am very happy with how flat i got the roof it turned out really nice 
Let's see it there. There's a couple of the little divots that I missed there. Right there, and then there were some right up here I missed, but oh well. But uh, overall, it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So, so now I'm going to. This thing's filthy now, so I am going to do a, a wet sand and buff. I'm going to take a little section somewhere here and I'm gonna wet sand it with some 12 or 1500 and then I'm gonna hit it with some heavy cutting compound and see what this paint job does, see what it, if it comes back at all or what I can do with it. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do that next and see how that looks.